There are absolutely no words right now that can express how impressed I am with what is happening today with Google. I mean, just yesterday, or maybe just a couple of months ago, ChatGPT was released to the public so that we can start experimenting with it and start playing with the future of programming, AI questions, anything AI related. We got a taste of the future. So at this point, I was thinking, what is going to happen to Stack Overflow? What's going to happen to Google, which have quite poor search results compared to what ChatGPT is offering. And I got the answer yesterday. On the 6th of February, Google announced that they're working on an AI called Bard with new features that are going to improve the search engine far beyond what it is today. And this can actually be seen as a competitor for ChatGPT. Of course, there's going to be some differences because they're concentrating on different aspects of what people are asking on a daily basis. But it's still very interesting to see that Google has made the step forward to try to compete with ChatGPT. It really shows you that a lot of companies are starting to sweat since ChatGPT took a step forward. But with all of that being said, I still have no clue what Stack Overflow is going to do because right now we have Google that's taking over with AI, ChatGPT, which is taking over with AI. Maybe Stack Overflow might also take over with AI. I'm very excited to see how they're going to innovate to prevent their company from just crumbling apart. Now I'm going to link this article in the description box down below in case you are curious. What it's practically saying is that they're working on this new technology and technology is increasing very fast. And even that today, the scale of the largest AI computers is doubling every six months, far outspacing Moore's law. So they're just saying that technology is increasing at an alarmingly fast pace and that you can see this in everyday life already. Then they introduced their new AI, which is called Bard. And Google has been working on lots of technologies for a long time. That is certain. They're not just hanging around doing nothing, even though it might seem like that when we use the Google search engine. They're constantly innovating, but it appears to me that since ChatGPT, they've been a bit more pressured to innovate faster than at the pace that they were currently going. So two years ago, they unveiled the next generation language and conversation capabilities powered by the language model for dialogue applications. And they just call that Lambda for short. And if there's one thing we know about Google is that it has a lot of access to data. It probably has every single piece of data you could ever wish for. As scary as that might sound, that is going to dominate in the field of AI. Right now, as far as I understand, ChatGPT has a very limited amount of experience. In other words, I mean, it doesn't have all the Google information to work with. So at this point, I feel that Google really has the potential to overthrow ChatGPT. It probably won't because now we have ChatGPT in our daily lives and, and with Google, you never really know what kind of service they are going to implement and whether it's going to be as effective as they promote it. But at this point, I'm fairly optimistic because I know that when Google has a competitor or someone that they have to go up against, they move quite fast. And about halfway through the article, it's going to give you this quick showcase on how the product is going to work, how Bard is going to respond. It pretty much says, use Bard to simplify complex topics like explaining new discoveries from NASA's James Webb Space Telescope to a nine-year-old. And if you use that kind of context, that is insane. I mean, I have no idea what that is. I would definitely write nine-year-old for my own sake, but that's just crazy cool how fast AI is advancing in terms of productivity, in search results, in gathering information without having to work so hard to get your wording right. Now, the rest of the article just explains some very quick information on how effective it's going to be in the future, how it's going to make people's lives easier, how it's going to give you more accurate information and so on. So near the end, you'll see another example, is piano or guitar easier to learn and how much practice does each need? And this time it's just going to give you a nice answer at the top without making you have to click on all these random links. I mean, it already does that, but now this time it's going to be more AI generated, which might give you some easier explanations or some more relevant explanations. And one thing I found very interesting with Google was that they claim to be bold and responsible. They claim to be one of the first companies to publish a set of AI principles. And I thought it was quite interesting to check out what these principles were. So for example, artificial intelligence at Google are principles. So Google aspires to create technologies that solve important problems and help people in their daily lives. And they are incredibly optimistic about the future and the potential of AI and other advanced technologies that are going to help empower people and benefit society as a whole. So they have this list of objectives for their AI applications. One is to be socially beneficial. Then they have avoid creating or reinforcing unfair bias. 
be built and test for safety, be accountable to people, incorporate privacy, design principles. And I'm going to leave this also in the description box down below in case you are curious about the principles. I know there's a lot of people that worry that AI might take over their jobs, might actually be detrimental to society. And I think it's always going to be 50-50 on that because as every tool you get in life, you can either use it for evil or you can use it for good. And that really depends on the society we live in, how it's going to turn out. So there's no saying immediately what's going to happen as soon as we incorporate AI into our daily lives on a regular basis. But for now, at least Google gave us a set of principles that we can hope that they will follow to help us relax a bit more about AI and the future with AI. And at the bottom, they stress that these technologies will not be used to cause people any harm, to develop weapons, or to use this technology for surveillance and so on. So they put this inside their principles and the best we can do is hope that they follow it. But with all that being said, I'm very curious to hear in the comment section down below what you think about all this and what you think the future is going to be with all of this or what the next steps for us as developers or just normal people is going to be with all this new AI coming into play. So with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.